So let's take a look at why functions can be useful to us. So it turns out that in most programming languages, using functions allows us to break up code in meaningful ways. Uh, and there's a number of reasons we might want to do that. We might want to break up our code just for sheer simplicity. Um, by having code in specific kinds of blocks makes it much easier to look and see what's going on. Um, as our code gets more complicated, breaking up our code also means we can reuse code rather than typing the same code over and over again. Um, and as part of this course, you're going to be expected to break up your code into specific blocks. Typically, I'm going to tell you how to break them up and what functions they should be in. Um, not necessarily because it's the best way to program. In many cases, it is in fact not the best way to program. Um, but it is often the best way to learn programming to understand the concept of functions and how functions work. So be sure to bear with me with, on all of this as I kind of show you um, the way that this all comes together with functions. So you can see I've got this function. I've created a function called main. In this class, we always have a function called main. And just to make my life easy, I've gone ahead and called main because inevitably what happens is if I forget to put the call to main in there, I'll write a whole bunch of code and then it won't run and I won't know why and it'll just be because I forgot that main. So recall that a lot of times, I'm just gonna do a quick copy and paste to save a little time because not the greatest type is in the world, but uh, we, uh, we do this a lot, right? We'll ask for a name and uh, we'll print it. And we can see, we check this, we'll see that main calls the function main and then the code inside there will run and that's all fine and dandy. What is your name? My name is blank, because I hit the wrong button. We'll try it again, just, just to prove it works here. What is your name? Click over there, B. My name is B. Simple, right? Um, what if I wanted to know your name more than once? Well, your brain might say, well, I should do all of this more than once. So there's a couple of problems with that. The first big problem is you can't have more than one main. Right, that's gonna cause all kinds of problems. So I can be, and then, you know, it doesn't really know what it's to do. Uh, let's undo that here. I put that over here when I put in B. It runs, but I actually don't know which one ran, right? Um, because they're both called main. So maybe I say, well, I need more than one name. All right, so we'll call this diff user input. And that's all fine and dandy. Um, but it's still calling this def main because all that stuff is inside main. So typically, we're on the right track with this. We, yeah, we do want more than one function, but we don't want the same code in each function. That's redundant. Uh, good programmers are inherently lazy. We don't like to type the same thing more than once. So now that I've created this new function called user input that has this user input, instead of putting it here, what can I do? Well, I can just call user input. Right, so just like I called main from here, I can call user input from here. So if I put user input in here as a call, a simple call to user input. Now Python reads down this, it says, oh, there's a main, I need to remember that. Oh, there's a def input, I need to, or user input, I need to remember that. Oh, call main, all right, so I'll go to main. Now I'm in main, oh, there's a call to user input. So I'll go to user input and run this code. So watch, when I run this now, we're still gonna get that same, what's your name? Cool. And let's say I wanted to ask it more than once. Well, instead of writing the same code again, now that I've got a function, I could just use the same function again. So now it says call user input. And then when user input is done, it's going to call user input again, right? When it gets to the end of user input, it goes back to main, see if there's anything left. Yes, there's another call. So it comes back to user input. When it gets there, it'll go back to main, nothing's left, and it's done. And just to show that it will done, we'll go ahead and put a print statement main print. Finished. Just so that we can see that it's actually returning. Oops. So let's run that. What's your name? My name is B. What's your name? My name is Mr. B. And you can see it ran each, ran each of these lines. It called user input, asked for a name. Called user input again, asked for a name. And then finished. So in a nutshell, that's reusable code. That's calling a function. We would call this a void function because it doesn't return anything, right? It just does something all by itself. You'll understand what I mean by return in the videos that are coming up.